ladies and gentlemen, and being a producer of Wrestle Massacre, as well as Inside Movies Galore, I am David Stregi, and welcome to Delusions of Grandeur. Enjoy the reviews. I certainly did. That's it. Screw you and your college flunkies. I've had enough of this from you and from everyone else. I know what you guys are trying to do. Break me down, drive me out of the force. Well, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than a lame prank like this to get Curtis Mooney to throw in his badge, so fuck you. Over. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Delusions of Grandeur, and I have some more exciting videos to show you. Um... I had out on Lend uh, uh, to uh, to a friend of mine uh, a couple of things, and uh, I had some boxes show up. So uh, let me get started here. Um, so I ended up picking up um, Leprechaun Returns, and I did watch this. Um, it doesn't have uh, Warwick in it, but um, it was directed by... It looks like it's directed by... Uh, I cannot see uh, who directed uh, this. Hold on. I need to look him up. So this is actually um, a sequel to the original series. Uh, and I was surprised because... Uh, this actually says it was with Lionsgate and uh, Sci-Fi, um, which kind of surprised me uh, because Sci-Fi isn't entirely known for, you know, practical effects. Uh, I mean, practical effects. They're they're more known for CG. Uh, CG. Bad CGI. <laughs> bad, 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 bad CGI. And uh, here I, uh, here, let's see, Leprechaun Returns. It's a 2018 film, and uh, it's directed by Stephen Kostansky. Um, and Stephen Kostansky uh, is... Uh, Let's see, he is known as uh, directing Manborg, um, Father's Day, Biocop, um, The Void. Um, so, uh, so this this is a unique f uh, f uh, film, I, th I think, and I actually like some of the kills in here. So, evidently, some girl ends up. Being like the descendant of someone who had actually put this particular leprechaun character into whatever form that he came from. And I like that uh, the fact that uh, he is back to doing those rhymes of, uh, with, uh, and, uh, I think, I think it feel like this is a, at least a little darker, um, in feel, uh, so, yeah, I'm glad I picked this up, um, once again, it's called Leprechaun Returns, so, um, there we go, 
So um, I ended up picking up an, an, a, a kind of an independent feature, um, and it was with Shout Fa uh, Factory and Skylar Pictures. It is a female uh, superhero fi uh, uh, fi uh, film about a vigilante um, superhero who kinds of uh, kind of ends up being. I wouldn't mind checking out if this actually ca uh, came out with a sequel. And um, here we go. Uh, it is directed by Alia uh, Rosati. Uh, so uh, so um, to save her city, she will have to accept her destiny. Batavia's sister uh, city is a metropolitan jewel, but one increasingly tarnished in the face of rising crime. Amidst the chaotic onslaught of robbery and violence, Stremea, a waitress at a cafe, dreams of a glorious life as an actress. A chance meeting with a film director and his assistant leads to a life-changing series of events uh, for Stremea uh, as they take her on an adventure, on a thrilling adventure that finds the waitress turned actress, transforming into the person Batavia City needs and uh, deserves most. The consummate kick-ass superhero. Uh, taking to the streets as a valentine, she becomes a role model to the people of Batavia and a foil to the city's lowlifes and never-do-wells. But when a sinister masked villain emerges from the shadows of the night, Shremela, Shremea realizes that uh, that all of her vigilante exploits were a mere dress rehearsal for the ultimate showdown. So, um, I believe that this was from a totally different country, and it's called uh, it, it, it call it's called Valentine the Dark Avenger. So, kind of like that uh, um, slipcover. It's kind of cool. I heard about uh, about it, and I wanted to pick it up, and uh, I did. Um, the next thing I di uh, di uh, did uh, was uh, this: I had picked this up at uh, Half Price Books um, during one of their sales, and it ended up being, I think, uh, more like fourteen bucks because uh, because of the thing that was going on and what uh, what Netflix. Uh, has come out with a series called Stranger Things. And um, Stranger Things Season 1 and 2 have come out in these, like, uh, like very cool VHS-looking Blu-ray DVD combo pa uh, packs. And what happens is it looks like a VHS re uh, rental from Hawkins Video. And uh, you have the inside of the uh, 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 this, definitely. So... And in the insert here, you have, um, let's see, what does this, uh, okay, so these are some photos from the series. I'm just showing you a few of them. And evidently, some of them are from the series, some of them are from behind the scenes. So, yeah. And then, of course, then you have the way that these are set up in there. So, in so that though these per se are the Blu-ray, there are three discs for the Blu-ray, and then back here are the DVDs. So you have to understand the way things are <laughs> these days. <laughs> so, I thought that this was a unique thing. They didn't, uh, they didn't pick up uh, and go out of um, out of print right away like they thought they were, but they are actually really nice. The only thing is that they are very bare bones. Netflix doesn't seem to realize the 
the value in putting extras on their shit. So it is very bare bones. It, ha it really has no making up documentaries uh, or anything uh, thing li uh, li like uh, that. It is just strictly the show so that people can have it. So there I have it, Stranger Things Season 2. And I did mouth through it, and I did like it. I mean, I, I did like the second se season. I wouldn't mind checking out the third season, uh, but um, I, tr I love to have the physical releases or, or what, what, what not. Okay, so before I get into the box, the first box, which I had actually bought from Brad Twig, um, I wanted to talk about a collection here that I have. And it's one of the first um, collections that I got of Jackie Chan, uh, some of his earlier stuff. So <laughs> a funny story is um, I actually got this on that, you know, sweepstakes th uh, thing, the publisher's clearing house, and I'd ordered it, and, and then they sent me a, uh, uh, sent me a letter saying, uh, that, uh, that they were out of stock, and they had to wait for, uh, for it to come back in. Well, this has, um, Fantasy Mission Force, um, which is, uh, that's the, uh, that's the, the reason why I picked this up. Um, Fantasy Mission uh, Force is like a phenomenal, uh, to, uh, to me it is a phenomenal, uh, drive-in classic. And uh, uh, the reason why is, is even though it's it's got really bad acting, um, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got uh, Amazon women. It's got um, martial arts. It's got uh, it's kind of set up like. Uh, the dirty do uh, do a dozen, and on the VHS version that I had, um, one of the uh, the pers uh, people that had been kidnapped was, uh, I believe, Abraham Lincoln, which we know to be dead. But th there is also a horror aspect to this spell uh, film. They end up in this haunted house, and there's these weird things going on, and it's just funny as fuck, and uh, it's one of the uh, films that I enjoy. Um, it's my bread and butter. Oh, well, in any case, on here as well is Master with Cracked Fingers from 1974, Eagle Shadow Fist, 1973, Fire Dragon from 1986, and The Young Tiger from 1973. So, there is my copy of the Jackie Chan um, collection. I think this is rare now because I don't really see it um, all too much out there, and I'm glad that I actually picked it up. It must have been a favorite because it was. It had sold out. It was. It, it, they got. Uh, they didn't really have it in stock anymore at the time. So um, here I will start with Brad's um, box of goodies. So, apparently Brad Twig, who I've worked with before, um, I've produced a couple of his features. Let me... Uh, okay, I'm trying to get this to balance here. Alright, so, apparently he was... Because um, met, uh, several of his films have been picked up by Wild Eye Releasing, um, he was manning one of the booths for Wild Eye, and he decided to message me and um, let me know what he had left from the booth, and um, I ended up having, uh, not having a ton of um, the uh, films that he had on hand. Now, this one, this particular one was not part of that b a bunch that I was, uh, I'm talking about with the Wild Eye. Um, this, uh, this one I already have. Um, but I didn't have it signed, and it's signed by um, some of the pe uh, people, as you can uh, see. Um, so, um, uh, for generations, the strange inbred Arkoff family has lived in their creepy Italian castle, undisturbed by the outside world, until one night when, when their sanctuary is invaded by a trio of treacherous art thieves, and the Arkovs must fight for their lives, aided uh, by, uh, only by ancient protectors of the castle, the deadly Skullheads. 
And uh, these characters are very different from uh, the Puppet Master uh, 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 creatures, but they are very similar in style and design. And I think that uh, they, he didn't do... Uh, they didn't do too bad on the creature des uh, design. I love how the fact that, uh, that Charles Band's features do not feature too much um, CGI. Um, that being said, I, I love that uh, there a lot of it is special effects. And uh, even th though I know he gets a lot of slack for be uh, be uh, being a character uh, being a director and producer that it comes from money um i enjoy many of the productions that he puts out um so um there's there was that one uh let's see going on to some of the wild eyes so mortuary massacre this one is directed by chris j miller um and uh, this classic, uh, classically 1980s style horror anthology finds a place. P police detective investigating several bloody, mysterious deaths, which all took place on Halloween night. His search leads him to the local mortician, who then tells him the bizarre backstories of three of the victims. Uh, with each tale more gruesome and insane than the next until the lines between reality and fiction begin to blur in a haze of splatter, violence, and sex. And apparently there are some short films on uh, on here as well. Um, so, yeah. Mortuary Massacre. Kind of like the uh, cover of this. Uh, moving on to... Uh... Now, I actually have this already. Um, in a triple pack, but I wanted it alone for, uh, for the sake of having it alone. And it is a Mar uh, it is a Donald Farmer film. Um, it's called Shark Exorcist. Satan has jaws. Um, you're going to need a bigger cross. A demonic nun summons Satan to a small fishing village where he takes over the bodies of a great white shark and also a young woman. A chain reaction of evil grips the tiny community as the shredded bodies wash up with the possessed woman stalks the local populace. A Catholic priest arrives in search of his missing brother, and he must fight both teeth and temptation on land and sea in order to send both of these man-killers back to hell before the devil's tide washes ashore for good. Uh, the film stars Angela Carrots, uh, Bobby Carrots, uh, Alain Huntington, uh, Ron Jonah, and Christy Moritz. So, there we go. Shark Exorcist. And it definitely sounded like it was a crazy film. Now, this film actually has my name in it. Uh, but it was originally called The Stirring. Um, of course, they fucked up with the title and called it now Mrs. Claus. Now, I do like the cover of the uh, uh, this, so don't get me wrong. Um, it stars Brick Stevens, Helen Udi, and Kaylee Williams. And uh, here we go. Naughty or nice does not matter. You're dead. A group of college students attending a Christmas party at a sorority house that has a sinister past years earlier, a pledge committed suicide after a, br a brutal hazing. The current students are stalked and murdered by a bloodthirsty killer who appears to be the beloved wife of Santa, uh, Santa Claus. The 1980s styled holiday slasher in the tradition of Black Christmas and Silent Night, Deadly Night, and starring legendary screen queen... Helen Odie from My Bloody Valentine and The Dead Zone, and Brig Stevens from The Slumber Party and Nightmare Sisters. Um, and this is written and directed by Troy Escamella. So, there we go. Mrs. Claus. Otherwise known as The Stirring. So, here we have a movie called The Snarling. Don't cry, wolf. And evidently, this is a werewolf uh, of, uh, film. A new moon has risen, and it's uh, directed by Pablo Raybold. Re In a rural village, the cast and crew of a horror film find themselves accused of a rash 
of Savage Murders uh, when the cursed movie they are making is connected by police to several gruesome slayings seemingly committed by some sort of monster, while the locals inter uh, interfere in the productions for their own gain, and detectives try to thin the deaths on the filmmakers, the body count grows as the unstoppable beast remains on the loose. So there we have the snarling. Love that cover, uh, cover by the way. Kind of different. So here we have another one called Karis L. Step Right Up and Die. Starring Steve Rimp uh, Rimpinchy, uh, Haley Madison, uh, Madison, and Chris Proud. Uh, this is One Pissed Off Unicorn. And uh, this is uh, directed by Steve Rudzinski. Uh, um, Duke, a carousel unicorn, hates his job. He has to let kids climb on his back and ride him for hours every day. But one kid has finally pushed him too far. Duke breaks free of his eternal carnival hell, and embarks on a sadistic bloody rampage of revenge on humanity, starring, uh, uh, starring with a house party full of soon-to-be victims. So, there we go. Karis Hell. Kind of a wicked cover there, hey? So here I have uh, Wild Eyes Raw and Extreme Collection. Um, this one has the Goreface Killer, Eat My Violence, and it's unrated. This is directed by Jason Matherin, or Math Mathern, um, and uh, according to this cover, it's... It says gore face killer, but according to this title, it says the cock face killer. <laughs> so, according to Worldwide Celluloid Massacre, non stop over the top sleaze and trash featuring splattered killings, trash talk, various. Severed body parts, carving new, uh, new orifices into victims, and taking a dump in a kitty litter box. <laughs> in the deep south of Louisiana, there exists a world of never-ending sex, drugs, and violence. But the darkness of these swamps is only equaled by the darkness of a killer's mind. Into this world of perpetual intoxication comes a gut-nodding uh, bloody climax with the gore-faced killer surfaces when the gore face uh, killer surfaces from his slumber to begin his reign of gorging, throbbing terror. This is the first film in the infinite, infamous Cock Face Killer trilogy, followed by Gorgasm in 2007 and Grim Wave 2013. This film. was originally titled Attack of the Cockface Killer, but we had to change the name because we were warned no stories or websites would carry the film with that title. Cowards. So, yep. So the Goreface Killer on the Raw and Extreme Collection of Wild Eye. Another one from Wild Eye is called Silk Stream. One size kills all. The ink and the blood will flow. So this one is directed by Jason Mathern again. Um, a mysterious glove killer is target, uh, targeting the owners of various t-shirt shops in New Orleans. Two print shop uh, employees attempt to solve the murders while eluding a hell-bent detective, lustful distractions, and near-death situations brought upon by their sadistic bosses. Notes left at each crime scene inked in the previous victim's blood all point to someone within the community who's trying to cut the competition to pieces. 
an association with Terror Optics. It presents Silkscream, starring Hunter McGregor, Lauren Alexandra, Stephen Waltz, Lisa McElsmith, and Ari Lehman. Which we all know who he is, right? He played young Jason. Hmm. So next I have Soft Matter. And Sheborg. So Soft Matter is, it says everyone is a science project. And it it's this one is directed by Jim Hick uh, Hick Cox. Uh, it says bust in, bug out, and buzz off. Two graffiti artists break into an abandoned, reportedly haunted research facility in hopes of creating a, a ghost-themed uh, art installation, but stumble upon a secret team of demented researchers who are in the process of resurrecting an ancient sea creature who they now must fight in order to escape alive and not become their latest experiment. And uh, this also has a short film called Slow Creep on it. So, cover looks kind of cool. It's called Soft Matter. Stars Ruby Lee Dove, uh, the second, ha Hal Schneider, Mary Anna Zalone, Devin Placid, Mark Bloomberg, Catherine Grady, David Dillard, Sam Stinson, and Mikhail Monroe. So there we have it, soft matter. A Sheborg uh, says, part woman, part machine, total destruction. Chaos will provide. An alien fugitive crash lands on Earth and begins turning people into cyborgs that feed on animal flesh. Dylan and her best friend, Eddie, have a team up to stop the Sheborg before the whole town is assimilated into monstrous machines of destruction. Uh, so, uh, so, Daniel Armstrong uh, directs this uh, uh, film, and, uh, like I said, called Sheborg. Kind of a cool title, eh? So, uh, next I have a, a two four film collections. Uh, I'm just trying to bring them out here. Uh, these are some of the, I believe they are Brentwood Home Video. Yep, Brentwood Home Video uh, collections. This one's called Lethal Vengeance, and this one's called Against All Odds. I collect a lot of these. And... Uh, Lethal Vengeance has exiled college high box uh, boxers, lethal justice, and scent of vengeance. Now, exiled uh, says uh, Philippe Soto, played by Edward Albert, a charismatic freedom fighter from Central America, flees to the United States with his young wife and baby, only to be hunted down by a death squad of counter revolutionaries. Recovering from future and uh, torture and brutal castration, uh, Philippe is taken into custody while his wife Maria takes upon a new identity, that of Amy Sutton. She begins a new life and meets Joe, Maxwell Caldfield, with whom she desperately attempts to rescue her estranged husband before it's too late. College high bo uh, kickboxers. There we go. That's the name of it. College freshman who trains in martial arts is beaten up uh, uh, at work by a racist gang. His co-worker, a Chinese cook, beats the gang up and trains the young man in kung fu. When a tournament is to be held, the teacher tells the student that he will not teach him for money. However, when the gang beats up the student's best friend, the student now must make the choice of entering the tournament or keeping the pro uh, the promise to his teacher. Kind of sounds like a Karate Kid like spin-off or something like that, you know? 
Um, Lethal Justice, the local cops in the city of Edmond, have their own method of dealing with criminals. They make sure that justice is served at the scene of the crime. When a gang of brutal murderers invades this virtually crimeless city, police officers Matlock and Evans take matters into their own hands. A beautiful rookie reporter discovers that the cops' brutal policies must be the reason Edmund has a low crime rate, yet never convicts a criminal. And Scent of Vengeance, a young, dynamic uh, petroleum engineer from Texas travels to an oil operation in Central America where he clashes with his boss, romances two women, and finds himself caught in a shooting war between a government army protecting the oil company and the rebel bank bent on seizing the lucrative oil f uh, fields. So... Interesting. Should be interesting. So, in Against All Odds, we have Kill Crews, Murder in the Orient, Zigzag, and Massacre. So, a guilt-ridden alcoholic German soldier agrees to take two British women, Elizabeth Hurley and Patsy Kensett, from Gibraltar to the West Indies in his boat. Early into the voyage, both passengers realize this is no love boat, but a blood vessel. That's Kill Crews. Murder in the Orient. In the tradition of Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, Ron Mancini delivers a powerful, powerful performance as an American secret agent. With the help of a martial arts master, he needs to track down two samurai swords that lead to $10 million in gold. Zigzag. In this fast-paced thriller, the wife of a prominent U.S. corporate attorney doing business in Moscow and a Moscow cop are unwittingly thrown into a web of greed, corruption, betrayal, mistaken identity, con uh, conspiracy, and murder, and massacre, following a bloody massacre in one of Seattle's underground China uh, Chinatown gambling houses, a take-no-prisoner's cop <coughs> hunts down the one man who escaped, clean from not only the cops and the FBI, but also a legal to uh, Tong hit squad. The panicked accomplice team uh, teams up with a captive prostitute and goes on the lamb based on a true event from 1982. So, there we go. Against all odds. Okay. So, I just want to show you this. Rucker Hauer, um, Alistair Duncan, and Kim Cattrall star in this movie called Split Second. Now, this is actually from a German, a German company called Classic Cult Collection, CCC, if you can see that. Uh, okay, so in jar, in im jar, okay, so this doesn't exactly tell me wh what it's about, but it's German, and most of these German blues are all region. So I'm looking forward to checking this out event eventually. Um, yeah, definitely looks like it could be cool. Okay, so th this is another Wild Eye releasing. It's called uh, The Butcher Possessions. Beware of the deep web. Genuinely freaked me out. Believable and creepy by Nerdly. Video blogger and amateur ghost hunter Chris Shaw takes his friends out to an abandoned house in the desert to investigate an urban legend he found on the deep web. 
in an attempt to recreate a ritual he saw online to see if it's true, they conjure the evil demonic spirit of a mass murderer whose work, whose work is far from finished. Now trapped in the middle of nowhere, this group of friends must fight for their lives as the butcher possesses them one by one. This is directed by Dale Trott. Looks kind of cool. Alright, next one is called The Punished. This looks like uh, it's in the vein of The Punisher. Um, prepare for War. This is directed by Rene Perez. Uh, and a professional mercenary for hire becomes torn between his loyalty to money and the innocent citizens of a small town when he finds himself employed by a powerful business uh, woman looking to fight injustice. Uh, if you've got the money, he has the bullets. And it looks like he's got, I got a cool mask on. So, yeah. Next, I have All Hell Breaks Loose. Now, I actually have another copy of this somewhere, and it's actually the copy before it actually became this copy. Um, and uh, it's directed by Jeremy Garner. Uh, it says, Live to Die, Die to Live. A story of love, leather, and brutal violence. When the Satan Sinners, a vicious biker game, literally spawned from hell, attack a bride and groom on their wedding day, they get a fight they never imagined. Now armed with some divine intervention and firepower, the murdered groom is out to save his wife any way he can before she is sacrificed to Satan. Even if it means dying over and over again until the job is done, with the help of a local sheriff, a priest, and a cowboy who just might be God. All hell breaks loose in the insane blo bloody homage to vintage 70s and 80s action and horror featuring danger. Aaron from Jackass. So, there we have it. All hell breaks loose. This says, Welcome to Hell. Enjoy your stay. And this is directed by Tony Newton, Sam Mason Bell, Ma Michael Aguar, James Cullen Brassock, Brad Bruce, Colin Clark, Henrik Burgard Clausen, and Jeff Kak Marinsky. You don't have to get uh, have to die to get there. You're already here. A terrifying coven of tales designed to take viewers into the nether reaches of insanity, shock, and horror from the twisted minds of producer Tony Newton. Grindsploitation, Virus of the Dead, Dark Tales, VHS Lives, and featuring the dark dreams of director James Cullen Brassack, Brad Bruce, Colin Clark, Michael Aguar, and more. Also featuring a cast including genre icons, Felissa Rose, Bill Orbisett Jr., Calico Cooper, and Tiffany Fest. So, that actually looks like it might actually be good. Next is Book of the Dead, Something Has Been Set Free. Once you've opened, uh, opened the book, you have summoned it. Directed by Giordani or, or Relana, Carlo and Melissa stay at a seaside villa, but everything changes when Melissa discovers an ancient book of demons and the ghost of a ten-year-old boy who has been dead for 40 years. She becomes possessed, <coughs> and it's up to Carlo, with the help of a professor of, in demonology, to stop the ritual that will bring about the rebirth of a 400-year-old demon. Starring Guglielmo Adrasto, Andrea Serino, Rocky Collins, Eduardo de Laurentiis, Sebastiano de Fiori, uh, Ocean Jarmello. So, there we go, Book of the Dead. 
looks kind of cool. Next we have Beware the Lake, starring Anja Nebel, uh, Audrey Walters, and Jonathan Lipnicki. Uh, directed by Elgin Cahill, a harmless prank with deadly consequences. Tab Tabitha is the new girl at school who catches the eye of the local football hero. This gets her on the bad side of the high school. Uh, cheerleading captain, and she is lured to a secluded lake for her drinks. For drinks and a late night swim. There, Tabitha is drugged, stranded, and generally, eventually murdered. But something brings Tabitha back to life so she can take revenge on those who send her to a watery grave. So, there we have Beware the Lake. And I think that's all I have uh, for, uh, for today, folks. Not the end of the box, though. So stay tuned for part two of, uh, of this box. And uh, I'll catch you all later. Thank you for listening. Have a great day, evening, and morning, wherever you are. Appreciate your t uh, the time spent on my page. Thank you so much. You were good, kid. Real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see?